Good morning, everybody. We are going to continue our journey. The Yoga Sutras. We are on book two, sutra number 13. This is an interesting one. This one is um, probably the one that most clearly touches on the idea of transmigration of souls, also known as reincarnation. Sometimes you can kind of get around it and be like, well, if you don't believe in reincarnation, maybe this is what's here. But this one pretty clearly states it. So let's, um, let's read it. I'll read it to you. And then we'll talk a little bit about what to do with it. So the translation that Swami Satchidananda has for this one is, with the existence of the root, there will be fruits also, namely the births of different species of life, their lifespans and experiences. So earlier he had said that the root, the womb of karmas has its root in the kleshas, in the obstacles. So karmas, have their roots in the ego, attachment, aversion, all of these things that are difficulties for us are the root of karma. He says, because of this, because of the root, there's fruits. So you experience aversion that causes actions and there's fruit of those actions. Some of the fruits are immediate, and this sutra is saying um, that it can lead to the births of different species of life and the experiences that those species have. The example that he uses in here, um, I think of a little bit the opposite, but what he says is, for example, if you're cunning in life, you might come back as a fox. If you're um, like to jab things at work, you might come back as a scorpion. When I was reading this, I was thinking kind of the opposite. All right, okay, so maybe I'm cunning and maybe I have some experiences from a past life <laughs> that are sort of still latent in me. So I guess it goes both ways. When we talk about action and reaction, there's like a whole ripple effect from our actions. And whether or not we believe um, that it migrates past this life or not, I think is interesting, but not important. And what I mean by that is what I take from the Yoga Sutras are ideas that I contemplate, threads of wisdom, to try and understand how the nature of reality is. So the Sutra is saying actions have consequences. And whether or not you believe that those consequences ripple past this physical body is something for you to work with, contemplate. Um, but even in the short term, I think we've all experienced this where we're rude or ugly to somebody and even if we don't encounter that person again, so let's say it's somebody random, um, you know, we're on a road trip and we're rude to the person at the gas station, we may not run into that person again and get a direct consequence from that person. But if you're like me, like there's regret that comes later, right? There's that moment where you're like, oh, I was kind of not very pleasant. <laughs> I feel like a jerk. This sutra offers a possibility that it's bigger than that, that our actions have longer term consequences. 
and it goes both ways also good and bad so if we do a good deed same gas station you know pay for the person coffee behind us um, we may never see that person again but we feel good and same thing with our possibility of karma's forward and back in our existence right it's partly um, what most religions teach us is be good <laughs> just in case <laughs> just in case and I kind of subscribe to the just in case thing I don't think um, I can know for certain what happens after we leave this body um, but if it is true that there are consequences um, yeah that's a little bit of motivation for me to do good things so we're gonna meditate Oh, I do want to make one little side note real quickly. This made me think of spirit animals. All right, everybody's talking about spirit animals in the last decade or more. So I did a little tunnel down into like, what are spirit animals really? And you can read all about that. Um, but, um, oh, where was I going with this? Oh, one of the things that it says about spirit animals is that the way to discover our spirit animal is um, through meditation. I mean, you can do a quiz online, but if you read into some of the more traditional teachings from Native American um, traditions, there's a contemplation and a meditation that can help us figure out our spirit animal. So if you do believe in um, transmigration of souls and the possibility of it coming from or going to animals. Meditation might be a place to figure that out. Yes, Mary, do you have a comment or a question? Uh, I too found this whole sutra a little disturbing and also I took exception with a lot of what they said having had pet scorpions and never been stung and watching the foxes and they seem like a lovely family. Um, and I was also unclear. I'd like to come back as an oak tree, but I didn't see like the plant option available. So it's just, it's just very disturbing. Yes. I think that was a good, good word. Um, but I also, when you were talking about this, there's a Shakespeare's quote that I'm going to mangle, but it's, I think it's Shakespeare, but it's like, the um, evil that men do lives after them, but the good is often interred with their graves. So people remember the bad things that you did. It was I think that was my dad's message to me when he would read me these things that you had to be good because that's what you know people are going to remember stuff. That's my thought. Mm. <laughs> say one thing about that before we practice um, I think on a very practical level I think of our breath and just our, the nature, nature of matter that we are part of the trees um, however that manifests right So let's meditate. Take your seat. Notice your feet. And let's start to draw your attention to your own breath. Start with the actual physical feeling of your breath. So the temperature or the sensation of the breath as it comes into your nose. And as it leaves your body.
Notice the physical expression of your breath, which might be expansion of your belly or your chest. in your mind's eye about the physical space that you're in so without even opening your eyes just an awareness of your room you consider the exchange of air between you and the space that you're in the commingling of air in the room as it comes into your body and when you breathe out the same thing your breath commingling back into the space where you are might be a plant in the room if so imagine see in your mind's eye the plant that's there if not just imagine a plant in your space get a sense of the breath that you're breathing connecting to that other living plant the scientists it's your co2 feeding the plant and maybe there's an animal in your space there's a connection through the breath.
Imagine the doors or windows of your space opening up into a larger area, expanding the connection. Picture a beautiful sky at sunrise or sunset. See the clouds, see the colors. You got a sense of your breath connected to that. in your mind's eye the changing nature of that sky Consider that if it were to change to storm, that our thoughts inflect our reaction. What if it's just the sky?
notice your breath. Notice the connection of your breath to the sky. bigger breath. Imagine you're outside like Fran is and breathe in all of that sky. Fran's smiling. She got to breathe the sky. Oh, and Jan's there too. Yay. <laughs> That's so pretty, Vanessa. Yes, it is. <laughs> and you're connected to it. Each of us, yes. even though we're yes, not there we with you. <laughs> we like our backyard. <laughs> little work to do but we still like it <laughs> questions comments insights holly please now i just want to say that you know this last experience i've gone through i felt unto myself and unconnected to my rest of my life and everything is discombobulated and but this meditation really brought me back to feel part of everything going on, my past, my present, nature, my dog. <laughs> I mean, it was a very, very grounding. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm glad you're back. Mm, you too. Take care. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you. Namaste. Thank, Thank you. you. Namaste. Good to see you, Holly. Bye. Good to see you. Yeah. Bye, everybody. <laughs>